we're diving into one of the best low power mini PCs I've tested so far for Proxmox in 2025. This is the Geekum A5 2025 edition. And if you're looking for something power efficient, compact and ready to run 24 by seven in your home lab, this little box might just be what you're looking for. So let's go through the specs, test Proxmox compatibility, look at power consumption, and see if it earns a spot in your setup. Well, right out of the box, the A5 gives off a very premium feel. The case is well built. It looks metal, though it's likely a metal plastic hybrid, but overall it feels much higher quality than some of the ultra budget mini PCs I've tested. One thing I really like, the screws on the bottom are captive. That means when you open it up, the screws stay in the lid. So no more losing those screws under your desk. It would have been nice if it was a toolless design, which many, many PCs are moving towards, but this still makes upgrades and internal access super simple. Here's a quick rundown of what's inside the Geekum A5 2025 edition. For the CPU, the one that I tested has the AMD Ryzen 5 7430U laptop processor with six cores, 12 threads, and bursts up to 4.3 gigahertz. It has a Radeon Vega 7 graphics adapter, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, upgradable to 64 gigs, a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, as well as two and a half gig LAN adapter. For wireless, it has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, it has USB-C, USB 3.2, HDMI, DisplayPort, and more. And it's got everything you'd want for running Proxmox or container workloads, which is what we are all interested in for Home Lab. This little mini PC is a very compact unit, clearly labeled ports, and it has, I think, a very thoughtful design. Uh, something that I really like about this mini PC, in addition to the power consumption, which we'll get to, is the fact that underneath the lid, you have a two and a half inch SATA SSD bay that comes with the mounting bracket and the cable installed. So opening the case reveals space for RAM upgrades, M.2 NVMe, and that extra two and a half inch SSD slot for additional storage, which I really think is great for home lab. Now let's talk about the important stuff, Proxmox. I installed Proxmox VE 8.4 using Ventoy and everything was detected out of the box, the internal SSD, network adapter, no driver issues. The only caveat, the onboard Realtek NIC doesn't support VMware ESXi natively, but Proxmox has no issues. Now, I know this video is about Proxmox. Why bring up ESXi? Well, as I've mentioned in the past, I think many PCs that have the Intel adapters do give you the options so that if you want to throw ESXi on this mini PC for testing or for a project that you want to get a little bit of experience with VMware and vSphere, I think that gives you options and that to me is value. So just note that this mini PC hardware is going to be a Linux based hypervisor that you will need to install like Proxmox or you could do, of course, bare metal Ubuntu running KVM. Now, here's where I really get excited about this mini PC, and that is power consumption. At idle in Proxmox, the A5 2025 edition draws around four watts. Yes, four watts. That's insanely efficient. And under full CPU load with the STUI utility and the stress utility, it topped out only at 25 watts. Now, as a comparison, my Ryzen 9 7945HX processor idles around 34, 35 watts. So if you're thinking about a home lab mini PC that you want to be super power efficient for something like Proxmox and running this 24 by 7 by 365, I think this little mini PC could, at least at this point, of the mini PCs I have tested from a power efficiency standpoint, can take that prize. When we think about upgrade potential, I would say this is mediocre. It has definitely upgrade potential. You've got the two times DDR4 SODIMM slots up to 64 gigs. So remember with DDR5, you can go all the way to 128 gigs at this point. So with DDR4, you're locked in a bit with the configuration maximums that you're going to be able to throw inside this mini PC. So just keep that in mind on the RAM front. Also, it has one M.2 PCIe 3.0 slot. So you're going to be limited to 3.0 speeds and a single M.2 slot. Now, I think this is counterbalanced with the two and a half inch 
SATA drive bay, which is a rare bonus, it seems like, for many of the mini PCs this day. Now, as a pro tip, I would say install Proxmox on your SATA SSD and then reserve all of the NVMe storage, of course, for the virtual machine workloads, LXC container workloads that you may run on this mini PC. I think the networking is also strong in this unit. You get at least a two and a half gig network adapter, which is awesome for NAS, for Proxmox clustering, or any lab scenario needing faster throughput. It's definitely shy of 10 gig ethernet, and there's only a single two and a half gig network adapter. It would have been really nice to have seen two two and a half gig network adapters in this little mini PC, but I do think the two and a half gig network adapter is a bonus and arguably should be standard on most mini PCs these days. Also, I really like the fact there's plenty of USB ports, including USB-C, though the USB-C is data only. So no Thunderbolt or USB 4, which I think is a minor downside with this unit. Now, in terms of noise, I think this also is an area it excels in due to, again, the efficiency of this unit. The thermals are very minimal, so even even under load, temp stayed consistent with no throttling. That's great for Proxmox VE server, a Docker host, Kubernetes node, a low power NAS device, uh, lightweight bare metal workloads. This thing really is built for 24 by seven uptime without really racking up a tremendous power bill. Now here's a quick hit list of what I think are the pros and cons of this unit. I think the number one pro is the ultra low power draw. Four watts idle, 25 watts load, has solid virtualization performance with Proxmox. It's ready out of the box. It's compact, it's quiet. It has decent upgradability. In terms of cons, I think the top of the list of the cons with this unit is that it only has one two and a half gig network adapter. I'd love to have seen dual two and a half gig network adapters. Also, this network adapter is a Realtek chipset, so you don't get ESXi support out of the box. You're gonna to have to use like a USB network adapter, which is a little bit of a bummer for options in the future. It also ships with one stick of RAM, so it's configured in single channel mode right out of the box, but it is upgradable to 64 gigs of memory. No USB 4 or Thunderbolt. Still, I think for the price, this thing is a really great deal when you consider just how power efficient the unit really is. However, I think this thing is a really great deal for a 24 by 7 by 365 home lab server for Proxmox or a Linux based operating system that you're going to leave on all of the time. I think the efficiency really speaks volumes in this unit. Also, if you have watched to the end of this video, I want to announce that I am going to give away the Geekum A5 2025 edition to a random commenter on this video. So if you are looking for a very efficient Proxmox server, please do submit a comment and we're going to randomly draw as we've done in the past for this Geekom A5 2025 edition. And what's better than an efficient home lab by winning a free mini PC along with the power efficiency. So please do comment on this video. So what do you think about this? Could this be your next low power Proxmox server? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to check it out for yourself, I've got the Amazon affiliate link down in the description that helps support the channel. And if you found this helpful, please do hit like and subscribe and turn on the notifications. We've got more Proxmox gear reviews and home lab and DevOps tips coming your way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.